If you've been into FB long enough, you probably encounter one of these, an 18650 batteries, and these things are in everything from radios to even drones. So what makes these batteries so special and how do I go about choosing the right one for my specific application? So today we'll be taking a deeper dive into the 18650 battery to help you choose the right one while trying to avoid getting burnt in the process. Okay, so I have multiple 18650 batteries here on the table and we'll get to them in a few moments. But let's first talk about why manufacturers actually choose to go with an 18650 battery as a power source. The first thing that's obvious is its size. This thing is very reminiscent of a AA battery and it's very small and light. And as you notice, manufacturers take advantage of this situation. For example, this radio right here, this is the Jumper T-Lite and it's a really good radio, it's very powerful and it's powered by only one 18650 battery. And because of that, they can actually fit this in tight spaces and make this radio very compact. The same is true with even these drones. We have a drone here, this is a long range drone by HGLRC and Reckon. And this thing is known for its lightweight size and its ability to fly pretty far for a long time. And that's accomplished by having a very lightweight and compact design. And these batteries are the right choice for this drone. The second reason why manufacturers choose this is because of its simplicity. And the reason why is because this can be used as a one cell or multiple cell depending on how you wire it. You can wire this in parallel and have multiple or higher capacity or you can wire this in series and get a higher output in voltage just like you see here with this drone right here. So it's very versatile, very simple and you and the manufacturers can determine what you want to do with this simple one cell battery. The next reason why manufacturers choose the 18650 battery for the battery of choice is because of its high capacity. And for example, this battery right here by itself is a 3,400 milliamp hour battery. So a lot of capacity. For comparison, we have another battery here. This is a pretty big battery. This is a 4S or 4 cell battery. And the capacity on this one is only 1,500 milliamp hour. So this has over twice the capacity of this battery right here. Now, granted, this is a 4 cell battery while this is one cell, but in the interest of capacity, if this were to be a now a four cell battery, just like this one here, you'd have, as I said, twice, more than twice the capacity as this one here. So you can fit a lot of capacity or the potential to have a lot of capacity in these small batteries. So it is really the perfect battery for long range and for endurance applications. The third reason why manufacturers choose to use the 18650 battery is because of its wide voltage range. And that's because this thing can operate between 4.2 to 2.5 volts. So that's a very big range. And in comparison, your typical LiPo battery can operate between 4.2 volts and 3.5 volts. So you have over an extra volt of operating range. That one extra volt can give the user more flexibility when operating their devices, whether it be flying or using their radio. And that's particularly true for the health of the battery as well. So this thing can go to a lower voltage before causing any significant damage to the battery. All right, so the fourth and final reason why manufacturers actually like using these batteries is because of its price. It's very cheap to manufacture, and it's also cheap for the consumer as well. These batteries can range anywhere from $5 to $30. It just depends on the quality and the characteristics of each battery. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now that we know why manufacturers choose the 18650 battery for their specific applications, let's talk about what to look for when choosing this battery. The first thing here would be the capacity. And you can think of the capacity as a fuel tank or storage tank. Usually the bigger the capacity or bigger the tank, the further you can get or the further you can use your device. So in this case, this is a Panasonic battery and this one is a 3400 milliamp hour battery. Now that's on the upper end of the capacity of these batteries. And that's a pretty good thing if you wanna fly for a long time or have a lot of electrons or current for a long time. The second thing to look for is your CDR, which is your continuous discharge rate. And this is equally probably more important than your capacity. Why is that? Because it determines how much electrons can flow in or out of the battery. We talked about the capacity and this one has a 3,400 milliamp hour capacity while this one has a 2,500 milliamp hour battery or capacity, but they do vary in CDR. For example, this Panasonic with a very high capacity has a low CDR, somewhere around 4.9 to 5 amps of output. While this one right here has a lower capacity, but has 20 amps of output. Now, why is that important? That's important because multiple devices might require more amps to operate or to use. For example, this radio right here, there's no moving parts in this radio. So 
it probably is gonna require a lot less amperage to have this thing working. And that's why I have this Panasonic battery. Five amps, that's more than adequate to run this radio. But by comparison, you have a drone here with moving parts. You have parts here that radiate or emit frequencies. Therefore, it's really wise to understand what application you use in these batteries, what's the max amperage on this drone. For example, we do have a 10 amp ESC on this drone at the maximum. And you also have other devices on this drone like the GPS and the receiver and the VTX that might consume some amperage as well. So we can assume maybe between 12 to 15 amps maximum, maximum usage on this drone. So is this five amp battery gonna cut it? Mm, it might, but I doubt it. I won't feel too secure with that. On the other hand, we have a 20 amp battery. This is more than adequate for this drone and will give you a, a much better experience while flying this drone. The next thing to look for when choosing an 18650 battery is the actual brand and brand reputation. Why is that? That seems like a very trivial kind of thing. So why do I say that? Well, the fact is based on the brand that you choose, you might have a better or worse experience with these batteries. I have three batteries here by three different manufacturers. Obviously I have the first one here by Panasonic. I have another one here by LG. And I have a third one here by Sony's. These are usually the three major players in this space when it comes to 18650 batteries. Now these guys have been in the game for a long time and they have the experience and have a lot to lose if these batteries don't meet your expectations. So they have the engineers, they have the resources to make sure these batteries perform according to what the specs say. Now I say this very jokingly and laughing because there are a lot of manufacturers or less known manufacturers out there that have specifications, really outlandish specifications. We're talking about batteries with four to 5,000 milliamp hour capacity and somewhere around 40 to 50 amps of CDR. Now these specs are really outlandish and even the really great battery manufacturers can't even achieve those specifications. So my point is some of the smaller manufacturers or smaller brands might have specifications that aren't really realistic and you might be in for really big disappointment. I'll leave a chart here on the screen and down below showing the manufacturers that make the best batteries with the most accurate specifications. Okay, so we talked about the things to look for in an 18650 battery. Let's talk about the things to avoid in a battery. And the first thing here, as we said before, is to avoid non-common brands. These brands tend to make a lot of batteries, very high, high volume, but low QC, low quality control. They might put out maybe a thousand batteries and maybe only 80% of them work. Furthermore, you don't want your quad, you know, falling out of the sky with a defective battery. So. Um, yes, just try to avoid the no-name brands or the less common brands. The second thing to avoid is these extremely high specifications. As I said before, sometimes you see manufacturers with some really high uh, specifications. Just for your knowledge, the highest capacity on these batteries are around 4,000 milliamp. So if you see a manufacturer claiming to have 4,500 milliamp or 5,000 milliamp, it's probably not true. And the same thing is true for the CDR. We're somewhere around 30 to 35 amps is the highest CDR. If you see manufacturers came in 40 or 50 amps, then it's probably too good to be true. So avoid really high specifications. All right, the third thing to avoid here is user base and that's trying to avoid extreme temperatures. And I know a lot of people can't control where they live or the operating temperatures, but try to avoid storing these things in temperatures above 45 degrees or operating these things in really low, below freezing temperatures. Okay, the fourth thing to avoid is also user base and that is avoiding high current loads and that's both current draw and current charging. Let's talk about current draw. Now we know that this has a CDR, this one here has a CDR of five amps. If I put these batteries in this drone that has a ESC of 10 amps and I go full throttle or I crash and I forgot to disarm it, I might be pulling somewhere around 10 amps. That will overdraw the current on this battery and that could lead to just premature battery wear, uh, overheating, or just an explosion of the battery. The same is true when charging. Now, I have a charger right here. We'll talk about this in a few moments here. If you overcharge this battery, this thing could just overheat and explode in your house. These things are very volatile batteries. They do put out a lot of voltage and current. So, you know, this could be very detrimental to your home if you don't charge this the right way. Since we're in the topic of charging, we have a charge right here. I have this one here by East Shine. This is an S4. I bought this a long time ago. I got this from Amazon. I've charged multiple batteries with this charger, whether it be AA, AAA, 
or 18650 batteries in this thing and this thing works pretty well it's not that expensive and it has a lot of smart features this one does charge four batteries at a time you have some that charges only two and it's simply just putting the battery in here and letting this smart charger figure out what's going on it will detect the battery its capacity and also the voltage requirements the cool thing about this one here is that you can also change the charge amperage as well so you have between 500 milliamps or you can charge at one amp as well so um, it's also very versatile you can get it powered via a barrel plug or your typical i guess ac adapter here as well so i'll leave a link to this charger down below if you want to take a look at it now these go by numerous names i'm sure this eShine um, company may not be in business anymore maybe they are but i'll leave a link to that and this thing is really cool because after it's fully charged it does not overcharge it just keeps the battery at the 4.2 volts all right guys now that we talked about the capabilities and characteristics of these 18650 batteries hopefully that cleared up any confusion when you have to go purchase this battery here for your specific application if you want to see these batteries in action on these devices i'll leave those videos linked right here so you can take a look at it so anyways thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video peace